Hi, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Stately Flowers 9. The techniques that we're going to be working on today are mainly paper piecing, and this is one of the first techniques that I learned when I started stamping and paper crafting, and it continues to be a favorite. It's just a wonderful way to use your patterned papers to fill in different parts of your stamped images. It's a great way to use up those little scraps, and people are always just delighted to see a beautiful pattern inside an image. The reason why I'm going to be showing you some different tips today, this is actually my picture from Stately Flowers 9. So again, I'm showing you a different way to crop it. So now it looks like a little round bowl. And for this particular one, I wanted to incorporate a flower from one of my other sets. This is from the Stately Flowers 1, the Wood Violet, and this is the Wisconsin State Flower. So you want to pick a flower that is going to be at least as wide or wider than that container that you're putting it in. And then how we can go about paper piecing this vase so it looks like the flowers are over it. Now if you didn't want to do that, you could just stamp out this vase onto the pattern paper, cut off the top, but then you would have to stamp and cut out around all these tiny little pieces of this flower to put over the vase. So by stamping it the way we're going to today, you only have to cut just that one little line. And then I'm going to also show you some different shading that you can do to really make this paper piecing look three-dimensional and some Spectrum Noir coloring for the flowers. The other products that you will need today, in addition to the stamp sets, you will need some acrylic blocks to put those stamps on in various sizes. You want it to be as close to the size of the image as you can get with the block to prevent from rocking. I'm going to be using the Gina K Black Onyx and also some of the Wild Lilac for sponging just to ground that image. I have the Autumn Landscape Pure Luxury Pattern Paper and I really like small patterns for paper piecing. If you get a pattern that's too large, when you stamp that image over it, you end up really losing the pattern and you're just seeing big images. So I like something that has a small tight pattern. Also, you can kind of lose the shape of what your image is because all you're seeing is a very busy big pattern. So I love those big bold prints for backgrounds, but I like smaller ones for paper piecing so you can see more of the images inside. I also like how each of the patterns in this particular pack are very monochromatic. So it's just a really nice soothing pattern, not too busy. The cardstock that we're using today, I've got some of the Gina K Pure Luxury Jelly Bean Green, and I will post all the measurements for these below, so always be sure to check the description for the supplies and the measurements. This is a great spring green for this time of the year. I'm also going to be using some of the Black Onyx and the White to stamp on, and of course this is the pattern that I just showed you from that paper pack. We have a sponge dauber for doing our sponging some scissors for cutting out that pattern paper. I've got some of the Wild Lilac Twisted Twine that Gina K sells, and this matches her Wild Lilac ink. And then we've got our Spectrum Noir markers. So I am using the HB3 for those petals, the CG4 and CG3 for the leaves, CT2 for that yellow center, and then the GG2 and GG3 for the shadows. And then finally for that little tag, just some kind of hole punch. I'm using the smaller one in the crocodile. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with piecing our little vase here. So you're going to want to start with whatever you want in the front first. So I always think F, front first. So we're going to stamp these flowers, and I'm going to take the black onyx ink, and I'm going to have some scratch paper below. So you just want to stamp anything that is not going to be on your card, you can just stamp above it so that we're not putting too much of this flower onto the paper and wasting our scraps. So this is just a very small piece that you need for this. You just need the bottom of those leaves, okay? So I'll put those right along that top edge. Now I'm going to take my pitcher and ink this up in the black. And it's nice that you can see through this one. It's a clear stamp. So I'm just going to get it lined up with those leaves, and it's okay if we have some of the handle over here because that's going to be cut off. So I'm just going to put that right over the leaves. Okay, 
And now we're going to go ahead and cut that out. And I'll show you how we're going to do the shadows on here really quick. I'm going to take the GG3 marker and we're just going to go right under where those leaves would be and just a little bit along the bottom and just a little bit around that bottom edge, okay? And you can touch this up after you cut it. All right, so we're just going to cut right along the black edge. And then we will cut off the handle down around this edge. Okay, put the scraps aside. And then we're going to cut just along the scallopy edge of those two leaves. And it's going to look like we have a little African violet sitting in a pot when we're done. Get that off. I was so excited to find yet another use for this picture. Okay? All right, now here is the paper that I'm going to be doing my stamping on. Now, before you stamp the flowers, you want to make sure that they are going to be lined up with this leaf edge, but that also this vase is going to be straight and parallel with the bottom of our mat. Okay? So if you just stamp this on randomly without doing that first, once you piece it in, it's going to be off to the side. So make sure you do this step. Don't have to glue it down. This is just to show you where that edge is. So I'm going to stamp this in my black. So you see, you can see that edge and that edge. They don't have to be lined up, just that they are parallel. And stamp it just like that. Okay. And then when we paper piece it, it's going to fit right in there. So it's called paper piecing because it's your puzzle piecing something together with the paper. Now before I glue this down, I'm going to take my wild lilac ink. And I'm just going to swirl that around on my pad. I'm going to turn this sideways just because I find that's the easiest way to cover that up. And I'm going to take just this piece of scratch paper that I have here and make that parallel with the bottom. You've seen me do this in another video, but in case you haven't, we'll start on the scratch paper edge and just swirl that around. Okay, so we have that. And it's a personal preference if you want it to go off the edge See, I did it a little bit darker on this one, but I like for it to fade out at the ends. That's just my personal preference. So you stop whenever you think it's done. Okay, now let's go ahead and color this in. And I'll leave this here just for reference so you can see where we're going. I'm going to be doing um, almost no blending today. I just really want these colors to pop and the shadows to have a lot of contrast. So we've got this CG3 for these leaves. It's a beautiful match for the jelly green, bean green paper. So I'm coloring in circles and that just all blends together. You don't have any lines when you're using alcohol markers. You can use Bic, Copic, or Spectrum Noir. Okay, now I'm going to do my CG4. And I have already put all the little shadow lines in the illustration for you. So the light is coming down from here. So it's casting a shadow onto the leaf from the flower right there. Under the flower there. Where these leaves are curled up here. The bottom edge of that little bud. The underside of that stem just a little bit and then just right along the edges here I'm just going to trace those little lines and those little veins where it is curling under and if you want to blend then you can go back over it with just a little bit of the lighter marker put just a little bit here in the fold and then right along this edge okay 
Now we're going to take the HB3 and it looks like I have two different shades here, but it's just the one with these lighter shades. You can layer them on. So we're just going to do one layer on the whole flower, leaving the center open for our yellow. You see how it just all blends together there. Okay, now we're going to go in. And if you want it to have more contrast, you can add another shade, but just really want to emphasize you don't have to have two and three and four shades of all of your marker colors to be able to blend and have some layered color. So I'm just putting that close to the edge because this is how the flower is opening up. It's lightest out here and darkest towards the middle. And just a little there. And then we'll use our CT2 just to dab some yellow in the center. Okay. And we'll put a little bit of adhesive on the back of our little pot and just press it right in so it lines up with those edges. And I'm using a repositionable adhesive. I really like that for paper piecing so you can make sure you have it just perfectly lined up. And now let's take the CG2 and CG3 markers to create just a little shadow underneath this vase. So the CG3 is pretty dark, but, or I'm, excuse me, the GG3, the green gray, it's pretty dark, but a lot of times when you're doing a shadow on your projects and it's just too light, you're just really not getting that shadow effect. So you wanna try to go bold and the GG2 the lighter marker, that is going to allow us to soften that edge up a little bit. So we see this leaf coming down here, this leaf over here, and then the pot. Okay, now let's take our GG2 and we're going to soften this out a little bit. And I think you'll be really surprised at how much it removes that color and just gives it more of a mottled look. But if you're trying to figure out how dark does my shadow need to be, then you can hold something up over your cardstock popped up and you'll see it's really casting a dark shadow. Okay, so this is done whenever you think it's done, whenever you have it blended as much as you want to have it. All right, and we're going to just adhere this to our mat. And this is about 27 inches here of uh, the twisted twine. And I love how this twine looks with this little vine, this delicate vine, and then how sweet it is, just this lilac color on the twine, how it's just pulling out the color of those flowers. Okay. And then we're just going to take a little scrap for the smile and see I just use up every little piece of paper that I can so this is just the back of this pattern paper and I'm just gonna just snip out a real quick little tag you might want to use your dies for this or punches but I'm just cutting it snipping off those corners and making a little hole and then we're going to thread this through now one end is a little bit longer than the other but i'm not going to worry about that i'm just going to tie it a little knot and then i'm going to adhere this with the foam squares, the top and the bottom, over that, and I will move those two strands of twine 
so they are parallel to each other. And then I'm going to put one foam square on the back of this tag so that I can tack it down exactly where I want it. So it's still going to be raised up, it's still going to look like it's free on the card, but it's going to stay where I want so it's not flopping or turning over. Okay. And then we'll just take the backing off of this and put that right there. And there's your card. And if you want to do a little bow, it's a little bit easier now that I have both ends tied. I can do that. And your card is complete. Then you would just layer that onto the base. And it's done. I hope these paper piecing tips were helpful and it gives you some ideas for what to do and how to select your papers when you're piecing. And don't forget to add those shadows to the piecing because it really made that vase come to life rather than looking like just a flat pattern. Please visit my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, for more inspiration and ideas for all of my videos and my stamp sets. And visit Stamp TV and Gina K Designs. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching today.